All right. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, thanks to everyone for being with us today. So we are holding this call for today because over the past several years, we've watched Educationer Commissioner Frank Edelblue and Governor Sununu's political appointees on the State Board of Education do everything in their power to erode standards for our public schools. And their latest attempt has the State Board of Education considering a Learn Everywhere application from PragerU, a far-right edutainment company founded by conservative radio host Dennis Prager. Our guests for the time that we have together will explain why considering PragerU at all sets a dangerous precedent and how all of these elements fit together in an attempt to undermine the quality of education for all of our public school children. And so now I am so happy to pass the mic to oh, Charmaine, who's joining us from Florida to share a little bit about oh, similar attacks in Florida. Good evening, Lens. Good evening or good afternoon, everyone. Um, I couldn't share what we're doing in Florida or the attacks in Florida without sharing my personal story. Um, so I'm going to share a little context and then I'll share a little bit more about Florida. Um, I can recall my mom walking me nearly about two miles to Boynton in Boynton Beach in elementary school, about a town 15 minutes south of West Palm Beach, Florida. I was writing in French, speaking Haitian Creole and barely understanding the English language. But my mother, a Haitian immigrant without the traditional skills, entered the United States through a program called the Cuban Haitian Entrant Act of 1980. Other than this dream of the American dream, uh, my mother can share Haiti's history, some of the history I have yet to hear in schools. Yet at home, we were taught the good, the bad, and the ugly. My mother always expected out of her nine children, six of us was born here. She expected us to teach our Haitian history to our American peers and to correct any misinformation that was taught, right? But as well as our African-American peers teaching us U.S. history, and I'm still learning today about United States history, Fort Moses, Tuskegee, syphilis study in 1932, the Tulsa Race Massacre of 1921. And today, fast forward with my four children, now uh, I have on my own, I have the same expectations for them when they go to school, when they learn about U.S. history, that they're learning facts, not fiction. And... <laughs> Talk about Florida since 2019, Florida has had one controversy after another with our governor. I mean, headlines and every news station you can imagine, right? Which currently sits in office, right? But most recently, the Prager University. And I'm going to put the quotes up when we talk about university. This ultra conservative curriculum that intentionally leaves out part of America history is outright dangerous. Our Floridians here, we're saying that it's dangerous. Despite majority of parents having spoken against, out against the um, adoption of PragerU, Florida Department of Education have adopted it. They've adopted this frivolous com uh, curriculum. Thankfully, in the Palm Beach School District where I reside, our board and our su superintendent said no way, and they will not be using the content. However, when a state adopts PragerU, a non-accredited curriculum, and gives power to a non-educator with no educational foundation, we are weakening the education we provide our children and the future of our country. Because last month, our Florida parent, there was a Florida parent that posted a letter. It went viral on social media to opt out on any lessons or curriculum for PragerU, right? But we stand firm and urge New Hampshire and any other state for that matter to do and have the same sentiment. Send those letters out, oppose this, tell Prager you and your teachers, administrators, you don't want your children learning from this curriculum or lessons. Prager you offers no foundation in reality. They believe that slavery was a compromise or slavery wasn't bad or native people were too far from peaceful. But here's the thing, the introduction, the introduction of PragerU materials into our schools only serves to undercut 
the ability for children to learn an honest and academically strong curriculum and develop critical skills. Education should teach children how to think, not what to think. That's how we build understanding. That's how we build tolerance. That's how we build community. And that's how we build a society. Lens, thank you so much for inviting me to share what we're doing in Florida. And again, I urge, and we urge New Hampshire and anyone else, say no to Prager U. Thank you so much for those powerful words, Charmaine, and for sharing with us what's happening in Florida. I'd like to now pass the mic to Deb Howes, president of AFT here in New Hampshire. Thank you, Lynn, and thank you, Charmaine. Charmaine's warning from Florida is an important one for us here in New Hampshire. Don't cheapen children's education by approving a self-admitted indoctrination company. In the Grand State, we are proud of our public schools, which are the heart of each of our many distinct communities from the seacoast to the North Woods. Our communities sacrifice to invest in the future of our generation, our Granite State students, and we wanna see them thrive in our public schools. Most Granite State families choose to send their students to public schools where they know the school boards that adopt the curriculum, they know the teachers and the staff who work there. They don't want that tarnished by actions taken by an unelected, unaccountable board of political appointees in Concord. Prager U is not a university, despite the deliberately deceptive name. It is not an educational or research organization. It is a media company whose stated purpose is to, to produce eye-catching videos with a deliberate right-wing bias. Why is it okay for an unelected New Hampshire Board of Education to approve any biased curriculum? Is it because it aligns with the political views of the individual members? Adopted curriculum is supposed to meet the students' learning needs, not the political partisan goals of an appointed board. Prager U's financial literacy curriculum cash course, which is being considered for credit under Learn Everywhere, consists of 15 five-minute videos, each followed by an optional worksheet. The videos are a simple passive presentation of information with no requirement for students to apply or use the information and no chance for feedback from a live instructor. There's a 40-minute question multiple choice assessment at the end, but nothing to stop students from Googling all the answers as they take it. This type of course has no academic rigor and does not lead to the kind of deep understanding we want a student to have to say they've really mastered a competency. If approved by the New Hampshire Board of Ed, students will get the same high school credit for passing this so-called course as they would get for taking a real financial literacy class with a live teacher who assigns experiential learning and gives actual feedback. Experiential learning are um, simulations or real life assignments to help students practice essential skills that we want them to learn and be able to use in the future, such as creating and sticking to a budget and understanding how loans, credit, and interest rates work. Prager U's cash course is only one or two clicks away from intellectually dishonest, <coughs> historically inaccurate, and frankly dangerous content that most parents don't want their students to view. Even with a separate landing page, each cash course video has a link under it, which invites viewers to browse all kids' videos. These videos include How to Embrace Your Femininity, which clearly encourages an extremely traditional gender stereotypes. Anya's Energy Crisis, which dismisses established climate science as fear-mongering and is full of unsubstantiated pro-coal narratives and also bonus anti-public education narratives. Perhaps one of the most harmful videos I watched was Leo and Layla meet Frederick Douglass. It shows two contemporary children who travel back in time to have a discussion with abolitionist Frederick Douglass. The children are told by the cartoon Douglass that he could accept the need for continuing slavery after the American Revolution because the founding fathers were busy forming a new country and needed to hold the 13 colonies together as the new United States of America. Douglas also tells them that the only true American way to make change is slowly, incrementally, from within the system without making any noise or disturbance. Anything else is un-American. This was set up as a pointed contrast to the Black Lives Matter protests that the children were watching on their television as the beginning of the episode. This cartoon is right-wing American exceptionalist propaganda through and through. Let's be clear, approving anything by Frager U 
means our students are only one click away from content minimizing slavery. A high school diploma from a Granite State public school is something to be proud of. Students work hard to master the competencies, complete the assignments, and earn the grades. Teachers and school staff work hard to provide the lessons, set up the experiential learning, uh, engage in discussion, give support and feedback. That diploma should open doors to opportunities anywhere a student dreams of going, whether it's directly into the workforce, onto an apprenticeship or onto college. The New Hampshire Board of Education approval of anything by PragerU cheapens all Granite State High School diplomas and introduces students to content that minimizes slavery, as well as other dangerous and inaccurate content, which is all portrayed as factual. Don't make a mockery out of Granite State High School diplomas. We need to reject PragerU. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deb. I'll now pass the mic to Megan Tuttle, president of NEA New Hampshire. Thanks, Linz. You know, as Deb mentioned, and I'm an 18 year eighth grade social studies veteran teacher, Prager U's curriculum does not offer the rigor that helps ensure our students can master this essential component of learning about financial literacy. Quality curriculum bears the standard of three well-vetted sources at minimum, which Prager U does not offer. Introducing this Learn Everywhere application is a continuation of efforts to lower the standards for public schools, not unlike the behavior we see in the state board's redrafting of the Ed 306 administrative rules, also known as the minimum standards for public education. The draft 306's outsized reliance on the Learn Everywhere program, as opposed to traditional extended learning opportunities that are appro approved by local school boards, that would mean the access to inaccurate, biased, and downright dangerous curriculum like PragerU would increase. By passing local decision making this way, boxes communities out of these important decisions and leaves students floundering at the mercy of a diploma that does not match the rigor of those in other states. Having an educator be an integral part of extended learning opportunities helps students process, understand, and utilize new knowledge, which is essential part of a high quality education. This is the fundamental problem with the Learn Everywhere program since its inception. In fact, financial literacy is now a half credit requirement for graduation from a New Hampshire public school. Commissioner Edelblue and the State Board of Education have yet to establish the criteria for financial literacy. We are concerned PragerU's offering will not meet the high standards our students deserve to prepare them for a future in this area. We should not be watering down our standards to meet this new credit requirement that the New Hampshire legislature deemed an essential component to a core domain for public education. But sadly, this is a pattern though with our New Hampshire Education Commissioner. We see this with the Learn Everywhere program. We saw it two years ago when he attempted to strip out core domain areas like languages and the arts. And we see it now with the redrafting of the minimum standards for public schools and the PragerU application. The bottom line for the State Board of Education next week, though, is this. PragerU does not offer the rigorous content or assessment that meets the mark of a competency-based education. What Commissioner Edelblue and the State Board of Education should be focusing on right now is a new draft of our minimum standards for public schools that responds to the feedback they've heard in listening sessions across the state since last year. Don't water down the academic standard we pride ourselves on for a high quality public ed education for every student in the Granite State. Thank you so much, Megan. Um, next up, we have James McKim, the president of the Manchester NAACP. Thank you, Linz, and, and thank you to all of my fellow panelists here for uh, their words of uh, how to approach uh, this very significant um, application by PragerU. Um, so I stand here today as the president of the Manchester branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, an organization committed to advancing justice, equality, and opportunity for all. Today, I want to shed light on a topic of paramount importance the significance of high standards for curriculum in our education system. This issue resonates deeply within our community and holds the key to creating leaders who not only shape our future, but also strengthen the very bonds that tie us together. Education standards are the cornerstone upon which our society's progress rests. 
They serve as a guiding compass, ensuring that every student, regardless of their background, has access to a quality education that equips them with the tools to become informed, thoughtful, and engaged citizens. These standards are not mere guidelines. They are the bedrock upon which leaders are molded. When we set high standards for curriculum, we do more than just prepare students for exams. We prepare them to become leaders who understand the power of empathy, the importance of critical thinking, and the value of embracing diversity. It is through education that we foster the sense of responsibility toward our community, encouraging young minds to actively participate in the betterment of society. PragerU is an organization whose products and services seem to exemplify the opposite of these values. They are not an academic institution. They are merely a media company with a clear political bent. If we allow students to view short videos with multiple choice answers for credit on financial literacy or any other topic from any source or at any place that also provides videos minimizing the travesty of slavery, we are not setting students up to value empathy, critical thinking, or diversity. But why does this matter to all of us? The truth is, education is not a solitary endeavor. Our community is interconnected and the success of one affects the success of all. When we invest in a comprehensive and rigorous curriculum, we are investing in the future leaders who will steer our community's trajectory. These leaders will shape policies, drive innovation, and champion inclusivity. Their actions will ripple outward, influencing the lives of every member of our community. Conversely, the absence of robust education standards diminishes us all. It widens disparities, perpetuates cycles of inequality, and restricts opportunities. We cannot afford to let any of our community members fall behind due to an adequate education. The talents, insights, and potential of each individual contribute to the vibrant tapestry of Manchester and of New Hampshire. When we lose even a single thread, we all feel the impact. Currently, the State Board of Education is also considering the 306 rules, which have been mentioned here, which define academic standards for the next 10 years. In listening sessions since May, they have heard feedback urging them to replace the equity language they removed from the draft. They've also heard feedback urging them to revert May back to shall in many instances, keeping strong academic standards rather than making some academic standard, academic programs optional. It is time that the State Board of Education tells constituents that they've heard them and to release a new draft to the public. All our students, no matter their race, gender, or where their family comes from, benefit when we close those gaps of inequality. So as we advocate for high standards in education, we are advocating for a stronger, more united community. We are advocating for leaders who understand the value of collaboration, who champion listening to all voices of social justice and who uplift their peers. By investing in our students' education, we are sowing the seeds of a brighter, more equitable future. So in conclusion, let us remember that the importance of high standards for curriculum extends far beyond the walls of the classroom. It's a catalyst for positive change, a driver of progress, and a unifying force that binds us together. We must continue to advocate relentlessly for these standards. And in doing so, and how we do that, 
is to advocate for the state to not accept PragerU. Remember, we're not only shaping leaders, but we're also nurturing a community that thrives on diversity, compassion, and unity. Thank you. Thank you so much, James. Um, next up, we have Carissa Caro, um, an educator with Educating for Good. Thanks, Linz. Um, Good afternoon. I've been a New Hampshire educator for over 20 years, 14 in public education, and the last seven working with teachers and schools in New Hampshire and throughout the country as they align their curriculum goals to instructional practice and assessment. Without getting too technical, I'd like to talk about quality curriculum development that is practiced at the local level at schools in New Hampshire and in communities across the country. The first step is identifying the specific learning goals students will meet throughout a course of study. Then teachers design learning experiences that allow students the opportunity to practice and demonstrate those goals. At the end of the course of study, teachers assess the experience and decide the next steps in the course. While New Hampshire has adopted a new expectation of financial literacy for all students before graduation, it has not yet identified the specific learning goals or standards <laughs> students will meet. Essentially, what does it mean to have financial literacy? Before adopting any curriculum, we need goals first. This is standard practice in all of our schools. There are many reasons to reject Prager U's financial literacy course. It is not an example of rigorous learning as we've heard before today. It doesn't offer multiple perspectives. The assessment is inadequate to understand what students can do with the knowledge they may have gained by watching 15 videos. And we can't check alignment to standards because we haven't identified them yet for New Hampshire. We expect our public schools to engage in quality curriculum design so students in New Hampshire get the best education. We must demand our state education leaders also engage in the same process. There are many ways we can help the Department of Education make their decisions. Attend an upcoming 306 listening session and ask questions. Write to the Board of Education about our expectations for quality learning experience for all students in New Hampshire and attend the September 14th board meeting to speak uh, out against PragerU. Thanks, Lens. Thank you so much, Carissa. I'll now pass it to our Education Justice Director, Sarah Robinson. Thank you so much, Lens, and thanks to everyone who joined us today and for all of my fellow panelists. Over the course of the past summer, Granite State Progress spent time in communities across the state engaging in conversation about the public education concerns and hope that communities have in Littleton, Exeter, Manchester, Hanover, and tomorrow, uh, I'll be in Keene, uh, we suspect to hear the same thing that we've heard in all of these other communities, that community members all share a deep concern for the status of public school standards in our state. Our children deserve high school diplomas that compare with or exceed those from other states. We're noticing a clear pattern, everybody sort of mentioned it, a uh, clear pattern of behavior by Commissioner Frank Edelblut, attempts to water down a robust public education, such as incorporating Prager U's subpar content for the, um, and the weakening of the ED 306 administrative rules, also known as the minimum standards for public education. New Hampshire students and parents deserve much better than we're getting. We'd like to encourage those joining us today um, to also join us before the next state board of education meeting for a press conference at 9 a.m. That meeting is on September 14th um, at Granite State College. 9 a.m. will be there. The meeting starts at 10. Um, we'll be joining the state board meeting immediately following the press conference. We'd be really grateful if you would join us there. And thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks to everyone. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Sarah and everyone um, for joining us and speaking out today. I, I also wanted to uh, raise that we understand that Executive Counselor Cindy Warmington raised a question this morning concerning RSA 292 uh, colon 8 slash G, which ensures that corporations and organizations do not describe themselves as a college or university without proper accreditation. The Attorney General is looking into this and will be very interested to hear their findings. With that, um, that concludes our, our speaker's portion. Um, we'd now like to open it up to 
of the press um, to ask questions of a particular panelist or the group as a whole.